Divided World, Divided Class by Zach Cope. Section. Core, Periphery, and Semi-Periphery. From its origins in the 17th century, when merchants from England, Spain, Portugal, and the Netherlands invested their wealth in large, state-chartered trading companies. Capitalism has organized production and exchange on an intercontinental scale. For centuries, capitalism has been a world system wherein, quote, inter-societal geopolitics and geoeconomics has been the relevant arena of competition for national states, firms, and classes, end quote. Seen from this global perspective of the unequal development of capitalism, production processes occur within three distinct types of economic zones, namely core, peripheral, and semi-peripheral zones. The core, or globally metropolitan, zone contains the most economically advanced and politically dominant states within the capitalist world system. Within the International Division of Labor, core states specialize in producing goods using the most sophisticated production techniques. Core countries are those best able to profit from economic protection, from external competition, and to realize the highest returns on their investment through their effective monopoly of capital-intensive production. The level of exploitation and coercion of labor in core states is low. The peripheral zone contains those national economies which utilize less sophisticated and much more labor-intensive production processes than the core zone. The periphery is economically dependent on supplying commodities to the core and, for much of capitalist world history, has produced raw materials and agricultural commodities for export there. In recent decades, however, as core country investment in capital goods industries has outstripped that in consumer goods industries, the periphery has begun to produce comparatively less capital-intensive manufacturers, primarily garments and mass market goods for export to the core. The level of exploitation and coercion of labor in peripheral states is high. Semi-peripheral countries are those whose economies are based on a combination of characteristically core and characteristically peripheral activities. That is, by, quote, intermediate levels of technology and capital intensity. The concept of the semi-periphery in the capitalist world system, however, is quite inexact. It may refer variously to 1. Those developed countries somewhat marginal to core political, military, and economic decision-making processes. 2 those semi-industrial third-world countries with sufficient demographic and territorial scale to allow for a degree of economic diversification. And finally, three, comparatively wealthy, quote, <clears throat> developmental success stories. For example, those East Asian economies receiving U.S. support for state-led industrialization as a geopolitical response to the Chinese Revolution. Typically, semi-peripheral states are exploited by such methods as unequal exchange and repatriation of super-profits, and dependent upon the core to complete their cycle of accumulation. However, semi-peripheral states also partake in the exploitation of the periphery by the same means. Overall, since the income of laborers in the semi-periphery and the periphery in their respective class structures, characterized by a large semi-proletarian population, are broadly comparable, 
and since both the periphery and the semi-periphery are dominated and exploited by core economic interests. The present work tends to speak mainly of the core and the periphery, to refer to the first world and the third world, respectively. End of section.